So you'd all have been introduced to, look at this beautiful cover, to this wonderful book, The Kite Rider, um, in your lessons. Um, you'll have read the blurb and chapter one. Um, so hopefully you are up to speed with um, why we're reading this book this um, half term. This is a lovely connection with Boxes and Saints because it is set in China. Um, and actually it's just a fabulous adventure story. So I'm gonna start with chapter two. Now remember in chapter one, um, how you's father has died and um, he is then dealing with the aftermath of that tragedy. Hao Yu's mother, Kui Yang, was a mother, a woman of uncommon beauty. Pai's relations had nudged one another at wedding and stared, astonished that a mere deckhand had achieved such a bride. His ageing and ugly aunts and great aunts shook their heads, implying that no good would come of it, comforting themselves that the bride's family was destitute and of no repute. But his cousins and uncles had simply looked mouths ajar, savouring this new adornment to the family as they would a rare and beautiful vase on a family shrine. Now they were gathering again for her husband's funeral, startled by the manner of Pei's death, but unstartled by death itself. It was a common enough event among the poor of Daegu's waterfront. A smiling man is lucky to have such a dry death. Great Uncle Bo intoned in his croaking bullfrog voice. His thin wife, Mo, ducked her thin head in agreement. It's harder for a widow when her man is lost at sea and she has no body to mourn over. Did they think this was easy then for Kui An? This jostling invasion of distant relations eating the last food out of their storage jars. Most had not visit visited Pei and Kui An since the naming of their first child. They had marvelled now that how you had grown to such an age without acquiring any more brothers, only one small, worthless sister. The woman had obviously been trying to keep her figure. How you heard a florid woman confide in a hoarse, envious whisper. So, they envied Kui An. These coarse, featured gossips, even now she had lost her helpmate and breadwinner, the love of her life. Hayu did his best to be a good and useful son. He had made all the paper images for the funeral, little paper cutouts of jackets, trousers, rice bowls and chopsticks. Rice water bottle, hand barrows, sandals and fish. He had even cut out a dog, though the family had no dog, because he thought his father might like one in the next life. He had crafted a double-layered, full-length coat and a fishing rod threaded with a single strand of silk and baited with a shred of feathers, a little model coracle too, out of the gum-soaked silk and a rudder of split bamboo. Now, in the afterlife, his father could spend his time doing the kinds of things he'd never had time to do during his lifetime. They're very well made, said a hollow-eyed young woman in an ankle-length tunic. She was holding Hayu's little sister in her arms. Hayu could not place which branch of the family she belonged to. They're nothing, said Hayu, which was the proper and polite response to a compliment. Oh, did you make them? I thought they came from a shop. The girl ducked her head and spoke to the child in her arms. You have a very clever brother, little Wawa. Does he make things for you? Wawa smiled and gave a wriggle, wanting to be put down. Off she went, out of doors, her wraparound apron showing her bare, plump legs from behind. Cheekily, she pushed between the legs of the assembled guests, unaware of the reason they were there, cluttering her yard, upsetting the chickens, eating party food. It was in watching her go that how you caught sight of the familiar straw sandals and sailcloth breeches of Dai Cho. Someone set off a cracking, rip-rap firework along his father's shrine but Hayu thought the explosion was inside his head. What's the matter? asked the hollow-eyed girl. Hayu should have said nothing. No one spoke to a stranger at a funeral. They just chatter idly. But he was caught off guard. Why is he still here? The chubby sailed yesterday. Why isn't he gone? Who? With a nod of his head, Hayu pointed out the first mate, who was in deep conversation with the head of the family, great Uncle Bo. There was no mistaking those buck teeth, the long necklace of mummified animal parts, the tattooed pig on his hand. He 
killed my father, said Hayu. The kind lady had asked if her brother made toys for her, so she had brought the kite he had made for her second birthday, the one with the carving of a little man hanging on beneath it. Now Wai Wai stood stock still, terrified by the stray rocket, the kite clutched to her chest, her little fingers inadvertently pushing through the paper. The crowd drew back from her with a gasp of superstitious dread. A kite with a man aboard it. At the funeral of a man who had died a wind tester.